What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny for real. We are back, y'all. This is about to be great. Um, it's November, and I'll be I'll put it out on the table, man. This is the month where YouTubers go crazy with uploads because it's the best month for us. And we're also getting closer to like the NBA season. Draft is coming up. Free agency is coming up. Even if the season doesn't start December 22nd, we're looking at MLK Day at the latest. So expect a lot of Kenny For Real videos. And I said in the last video, like, yeah, I'll talk about the Bucks for five minutes. And you know what? It's going to end up being longer than five minutes because I really have something to say. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe so you do not miss another Kenny For Real video. Now, Bucks fans, before you dislike, before you unsubscribe and drop that crazy comment, I need you to hear me out. Watch the entirety of this video and then you decide if you want to dislike the video. But this is a message to Giannis. Do not... Sign that Supermax contract. This is not clickbait. I legitimately don't think Giannis is signing a Supermax contract this offseason. Okay. Is that a little bit of clickbaity? I didn't put this offseason in the title. But I think that this offseason is what I mean. I will be the first to tell you that I am rooting for the Milwaukee Bucks and Giannis to come to an agreement after this offseason. Next, this, this, this is why, this is why. Giannis could tear his ACL in practice right here, right now, and that Supermax contract will still be on the board this offseason and next offseason. That's just how good of a player he is. But I am one of those people that I really, really, really want to see the small market teams keep their stars. Milwaukee did an amazing thing by drafting him when they did and helping him develop to the point where he is a two-time MVP. I would feel heartbroken if he walked to go to Miami, if he walked to go to the Warriors or wherever the heck he's, uh, he's rumored to potentially go. I would be heartbroken. I'm not even a fan of the Bucs. I think it would be terrible for the league for another, another guy, superstar player in a small market, to walk for another big market team because it, it just looks bad. So I want Giannis to stay in Milwaukee. What I'm saying to him is do not sign a Supermax contract this offseason because it kind of takes the foot off of ownership. It takes the foot off the general manager's neck, and you don't want to do that. This offseason was embarrassing for the Milwaukee Bucks. I'll be the first to admit it was embarrassing for the Milwaukee Bucks. As good as they were, as good as they were in the regular season, if you watch my podcast, you know that me and my three other co-hosts basically came out and said before they went against the Miami Heat, we all picked the Heat. Because there were significant holes in the way the Milwaukee Bucks did things that didn't look well matched up against the Miami Heat. So I kind of want to go through the things about this offseason, um, last offseason, and everything that I think the Bucks should be thinking or Giannis should be thinking about before he signs his contract. Now I want to start off in the last offseason and talk about Malcolm Brogdon. Shout out to Malcolm Brogdon. Last offseason, what they did was they signed and traded him to the Indiana Pacers. And no matter what ownership of the general manager tells you, the reason he was signed and traded is because they wanted to avoid the luxury tax. Now, I am far, very, very far away from a salary cap expert, for real. But I know that much. No matter how they try to frame it, the reason he was signed and traded away is because they wanted to avoid the luxury tax. Because there were a couple different scenarios that they could have done this offseason, or last offseason. They had his bird rights. They could have just brought him back. To keep Eric Bledsoe and Malcolm Brogdon as your two guards. They could have brought him back. Or they could have decided on Malcolm Brogdon over, over Eric Bledsoe. I don't know how they decided that Eric Bledsoe was the point guard for Giannis. Especially after the last offseason he had. And especially when you consider the way Malcolm Brogdon had performed. If you do not remember, Malcolm Brogdon missed the first series and a half of the playoffs last season. And then he came back and... The game I specifically remember was game three of the conference finals going against the, the Toronto Raptors. The Bucs are up 2-0 at this point. They have a, a commanding lead on this series right now. And the game three comes around and Nick Nurse and the, and the staff over there for the Toronto Raptors came up with the idea of let's just build a wall. Stan Van Gundy style. Let's just build a wall for Giannis. Let's have everybody else in the team try to beat us. And that was the game. I think Giannis ended with like nine turnovers. He did not score the ball well. He still did. I think he had like 25 rebounds. So he did everything that he could do without being effective on the offensive side of the ball. Chris Middleton also had a bad game. Eric Bledsoe also had a bad game. But you know who kept them in that game and kept them two possessions away from going up 3-0? It was Malcolm Brogdon. And that was kind of the consensus for the entire time of the playoffs other than, other than game five. Or was that game four? Other than game four, he didn't do anything. I think he scored like three points in game four. But there was consensus that Malcolm Brogdon was their best guard. Eric Bledsoe 
couldn't do anything. As good as Eric Bledsoe is on the defensive side of the ball, as good as he is in transition, there are obvious holes for Eric Bledsoe's games, and those holes just don't line up well with your superstar player. I don't know how you decide to keep Eric Bledsoe with Giannis instead of Malcolm Brogdon, considering how good Malcolm Brogdon is at getting to a spot, creating for himself, creating for others. Eric Bledsoe doesn't have that. Eric Bledsoe can't hit a jump shot. Giannis can't hit a jump shot. We're talking about a two-time MVP, but we have to all agree that Giannis' jump shooting deficiency has to be surrounded by good shooters, and Malcolm Brogdon was that. The man was 50-40-90. You let a 50-40-90 club guy go for another point guard. It's just It just blows my mind. And again, there was a scenario where they were allowed to keep both. Let's run it back. We were in the conference finals with this roster. Let's run it back. They had the money. They gave Chris Middleton the, the max contract. Okay, Chris Middleton's good. They brought um, George Hill back, and that turned out to be really, very good because uh, George Hill was one of the better bench guards this season. And they brought back Brooke Lopez. But they also had the opportunity to bring back Malcolm Brogdon to run it back one more time, and they decided not to. And this is kind of a thing that I've been seeing with, it's not necessarily smaller market teams, but some of the owners don't want to hit that point where they're they're hitting the luxury tax. If you do not remember, and these aren't on the same playing field, but it, it is relevant. The reason why James Harden was traded from OKC is because they didn't want to go into the luxury tax. And now James Harden is one of the greatest players of all time, and OKC would never got a championship. You hit that luxury tax with that OKC team, and oh my God, they probably win a couple. But they didn't want to do that. And the Milwaukee Bucks didn't want to do that as well. And then they got back in the sign of trade with Malcolm Brogdon. They got back a first-round pick. And I think that's this year's first-round pick. And I think it's like 24th, 22nd, something along those lines. A lot of people at the time, and, and, and if I remember correctly, after the sign of trade, they just thought that the Bucks were going to trade that first-round pick from the Indiana Pacers to get somebody else to help them this season. Okay, we let Malcolm Brogdon go. We got this first-round pick, and though this first-round pick is not going to equate to Malcolm Brogdon's production, it can get us another player on the team to do something. But they kept it. So this offseason, that pick, I need them to go out and hit it. Now, now the Bucs have like a weird history when it comes to drafting. Um, Dante DiVincenzo at 17 was really good. Malcolm Brogdon in the second round was really good. But everything other than that, I think DJ Wilson was 17th. Um, uh, Thon Maker was another shot in the dark like they tried to do with Giannis but missed on that one. So they've been hit and, mi hit and miss when it comes to these draft picks. And if you're going to keep this 24th or 22nd, I don't remember which one it is, you got to keep that pick. You have to draft somebody that can come in and be an impactful player right off rip because, again, you don't want to get to the point where you're paying somebody crazy, it seems like. But I just think that that was, like, one of the biggest downsides to the Milwaukee Bucks because Malcolm Brogdon would have significantly helped them in that Miami Heat series. Now, Giannis... If you sign that Supermax contract, to me, that gives a, a little signal to the ownership, to the general manager. Hey, we got four years to figure this out. We do not need to go in, go hard on it. And if I'm Giannis, I should be like, I want to win a championship now for the last two seasons. We have been one of the best teams in the league, and we haven't been able to get that, that cha uh, championship appearance. If you don't sign that Supermax contract and you walk into the office like, I want to win now, those rumors of Eric Bledsoe, the, I mean, uh, those rumors of uh, Victor Ladipo, those rumors of... I've seen Drew Holiday. They become a reality because the Milwaukee Bucks will have no choice but to make a trade to help you out now. The last thing they want to do is to have you walk in free agency, so they're going to cater to you. They're going to kneel before you, Giannis, because you they know if they don't do something to help you now, you're probably going to go to those other teams, and that puts them right back to where they were before you turned into a superstar. So don't do it. Your team needs significant help. Chris Middleton, as good as he is, he can't be the only shot creator on the floor for y'all. He can't. He can't be that. So that would be in a situation where you go get VO. VO, coming off the quad, didn't look amazing, but he could be a shot creator. Drew Holiday could be a shot creator. Wherever it may be, there's room for improvement for the Bucks. And if you sign that Supermax contract, I don't know if they'll take the same initiative to make those trades. I, I, I did a little research. This is like one of the first times in a long time where I did research going into a video. And it's only been five teams to win a championship without being in a luxury tax. Two of them were Steph Curry teams because Steph Curry had all the ankle issues. So they signed him and he wasn't even making a max contract. He's making like $20 million, which is a steal. And then that also allowed them to bring in Kevin Durant. So two of the, the championships were there. One of them was when Dwayne Wade was still on his rookie contract. One of them was the Spurs. And then the last one was the Lakers this season. That's it. Every other team in recent history, at least, 
has been in the luxury tax to win a championship because if you want to win, you're going to have to spend the big bucks. Spend the big bucks. <laughs> We're talking about Milwaukee. That's all I really wanted to say. Um, Eric, I, I, I would be... I would be upset if Eric Bledsoe is a starting point guard for the Milwaukee Bucks next offseason or next regular season. I would be. If this roster looks – if the starting five looks the same, I would be upset as a Bucks fan because we see that that the things that are hurting y'all, it's not something that will be fixed like that. You know how some teams are like, we'll run it back. We're more experienced. Like like the Clippers will probably run it back without Montrez Harrell. There will be more experience, more team chemistry. That won't really work for the Milwaukee Bucks. You know, there are things legitimately wrong with the way they play basketball, and the only way to fix that is to get more shot creators out there and to get more players that fit alongside Giannis. I'm not, I am not trying to discredit the front office because other than, like, the Malcolm Brogdon thing, I think they've done a pretty solid job building a team around Giannis. I do. There's a reason why you're the number one team in the regular season. But once the playoffs come around and the schemes start coming out next season, once you get to the playoffs, you will see teams build a wall against Giannis. You will. And now you need the surrounded pieces to step it up. Also, Giannis should be in that gym. You know what I'm saying? Get that. It's been getting better every single year. The jump shot has been getting better. So you never know. Maybe next season, I'm not saying knockdown shooter, but respectable shooter at least. You don't know. All right, Bucks fans. Now that the video is over, you tell me. Do you agree with what I said or do you disagree? You know, I can understand you disagree and you want him to sign a Supermax because at least you know the Supermax, he'll probably be here for four more years. But I think if you're a Bucks fan, you should be looking at Hey, let's try to win a championship next year. And you can't do that with the same roster. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. I'll be back tomorrow. Peace.